If you get this man off waivers, I'm telling you, get as many bodies in this building as possible. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. I hope everybody's enjoying their work week, just enjoying the week in general, because the Eagles are 9-1, and one and we're sitting, and it's Thanksgiving this week. We have a lot to be thankful for, as much as when it comes to our families and everything else in our lives. We are thankful to for the Philadelphia Eagles to go through this gauntlet of tests, games that, you know, we have to see if we're legit or we have to see that we have a good roster and good coaching and if we're good at all in some sorts. But um, things do look pretty damn promising in a lot of aspects. Still got a lot of football left to play. Now, there has been obviously some news and some rumors coming out this week. A few things I definitely want to talk about here. And the number one thing is, remember the Eagles wanted to add a linebacker last week with Anthony Barr. You know, Nicobe Dean is out on IR for the second time. And there is a pretty big, um, excuse me, there is a pretty big question as if they would actually make another move here. Now, it looks like Shaq Leonard from the Colts um, ended up getting released, but not even just released, but on waivers. Obviously, they don't want to release him because any team could sign him and, you know, they want to make it harder for teams to go get him. Now, he's on waivers, which means that it will be a waiver wire list of teams going after him. Okay, the Eagles are last on the list, and if he makes it off waivers, um, I kind of wouldn't be shocked either because when you look at overthecap.com when it comes to his contract, um, it's not really that settling. So um, I think he's got, what, a year left on his contract, which is this year, and he's due you know, $15.7 million this year. I mean, I'm looking at it, and it says that he's, he's, uh, his cap number is $19.9 million. Now, we've been through 11 weeks of the season already, um, and that number is definitely going to be a lot lower. Some people in the chat yesterday were saying $6 million, which is a big jump from 19.9 to, to 6, which isn't that bad, but that's, uh, that's a good amount of dead cap for nothing really promising. Now, it looks like Shaq, uh, Shaq Leonard, if I said his name wrong, sorry, I've been saying Shaq Lawson. I've been getting names mixed up back and forth the past couple of days with this, but Shaq Leonard... Um, obviously an all pro linebacker, um, had a couple surgeries last year, had injury last year and was a promising piece for that Colts defense. Okay. For the past few years. Now I know that this year Shaq, um, has been having issues with the coaching staff the last couple weeks, the last few weeks of this season, or pretty much the whole season in general, his usage, uh, in the Colts defense hasn't been top tier. They haven't been using him. He's had an issue. He's kind of came out and said it himself and maybe um, squeezed the front office hard enough to say, you know, I don't want to be here anymore, and that's it. And they did him a favor and put him on waivers. Okay, now, depending on what the Eagles want to do here, and this is only if he gets to the waiver wire to us on the last team on the waiver wire okay if the eagles you know he might not make it out off this way he might make it off the waiver wire or might not he might go through the whole thing he might be technically a free agent so if he makes it and clears waivers um he should be a free free agent at this point and obviously his cap numbers will be realistic um because you're not getting a cheapish type of player here i mean he doesn't really um I mean, when it comes to his contract, he's due a lot of money. I just don't see that he's getting paid. So I don't know. His salary definitely went down from $15.7 million. So it's probably a lot less. Uh, but for teams to take a $6 million cap hit, dead cap hit, if that's going to be the cap number, if you pick him up off waivers, um, they some a team would have to make it off waivers. And if there's a team out there that's interested, so when, now you're going to be dealing with him and his agent, then you could really start to at least try to um, – Redo his contract, if that's the case. I don't know if the Eagles are looking for a long-term answer here, but when you look at the linebacker spot for the Philadelphia Eagles for the future, Nicholas Morrow and Zach Cunningham, I think one of them will be a re-signed candidate after the 2023 season. Now, after this season, you know, what do you do? You know, N'Kobe Dean has been hurt, like, literally a lot, okay? He's been on IR two times, okay? Um, and 
The Eagles signed, tried to sign Anthony Barr last week. The Eagles signed uh, Rashard Evans before he quit out of his practice squad contract a couple, a few weeks ago and signed with the Cowboys for more of a starting role, I guess. Um, so the Eagles have tried this nonstop and nonstop and nonstop trying to upgrade this position. And this is what happens when you do not put... Um, this is what happens when you don't put money into this position. This is what you have to do. And I'm sorry to say, but our free agent one-year deals and Nicholas Morrow and Zach Cunningham have been playing out a lot better than N'Kobe Dean because N'Kobe Dean just can't stay on the field. Not only that, but N'Kobe Dean was hurt in the offseason, in training camp and OTAs. He was hurt that whole entire time. He missed a lot of valuable time. Um, so as of right now, all I'm going to say to this situation is you know, if he makes it off waivers, and I don't know if any team's going to pick him up off of his salary and the dead cap hit. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, but they could and redo his contract. Um, let's see if anyone fights this or tries to get somebody, you know, get him on the roster. This is, a, this is. I, I think it's a low-risk, high-reward move if they redo his contract and they feel like he could be a, the future piece here. Now, Nick Sariani was with the Colts when he was around as well, so... Um, you know what I mean? So there come some, should be some, uh, familiarity with, with this player, um, and, uh, you know, and just wanted some changes. So I'm um, coming to the Eagles and, and, you know, I, I want them to, if they do get him, you know, make him promising and just see what he could do and really could help this team out this year. If they want some usage out of a linebacker and trust me, I think they'll have one right here. He can be, he's the green dot. He can make the calls. He could do a lot can play inside, outside, it doesn't matter. The guy can do almost anything, and his coverage really isn't that bad. But, you know, I, I think from what we've been playing this year, I know it's hard to say that any linebackers in this system could be very successful with Sean Desai, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but this would be a pretty good move for the Eagles and would definitely love for them because it already shows, the Eagles have already shown Anthony Barr was not expensive. He was very cheap. This is a little bit more intriguing because he is a better player, but dealt with a couple surgeries last year, and you're getting yourself into something now. And Eagles would have to redo his contract, so they, in case they want to keep him for this year and next year, maybe one year can be voided. Maybe they can, you know, how he's good with the numbers and, and where, you know, and um, a clause in the contract or some type of loophole where they cannot, you know, they won't lose too much. Um, out of somebody that can possibly be very promising for this defense. It would be very nice to pick up somebody like this, but being last on the waiver wire or him getting through waivers because of his contract right now could be a high siding of why wouldn't somebody not want to join a 9-1 and team right now? This team is going to look the most interesting. They're the best team in the, in the NFL right now record-wise, and they look very attractive for free agents or guys that are still available. Talked about Dominican Sue coming to the Eagles if he wants to come back and maybe add more depth to that defensive tackle position. So we'll talk about that later on, on another day. Um, but I think this would be a good move. We'll see what happens. Now, I want to talk about Sean Desai and this defense, okay? If you were to tell me that Sean Desai was going to shut out KC in the second half with no points, I would have called you crazy. But I got to say, um, he's done a fantastic job. As much as I hate the bend, don't break defense, I hate this defense. I hate the scheme of this defense. And Sean Desai is making it work. Um, and it's it's got a 9-1 and one record connected to it. Now, I know that both sides, you know, they communicate. You know, it's it, the offense helps. The defense helps some more of some games. The offense will help more in some other games. Um, but because of what they've been doing, your defensive lines is what's saving this team. Your defensive line is what's saving this defense. That's our bread and butter is our defensive line. Because I can clearly think that Bradbury not, is not really having his best year this year. Slay is not having a fantastic year this year. And I can say in that KC game, Slay didn't really play that well. I would like the linebackers to play more downhill, but some of the times he does blitz. And some of the times he disappears, doesn't play the linebackers downhill and you know, you're keeping the middle of your field wide open and, you know, and sometimes when it's second and long, third and long, and, and what I hate so much sometimes is he'll still rush four. Um, he won't rush five instead of four, and, and it kind of pisses me off a little bit. But, I mean, it's working for what it is. It's looking better than Gannon's defense a little bit. Um, because if this was Gannon's defense against KC, you know, three and a half minutes left and 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 <laughs> you're, Patrick Mahomes going downfield at, at Arrowhead, okay? Patrick Mahomes going downfield at Arrowhead and you're putting all the faith into this defense, most teams will not survive this. 
I don't think any teams would survive Patrick Mahomes when it's up to this defense to make a stop. Okay, and there were there were stops. Okay, I understand people are bitching right now because it's like, oh, oh, you you only won the game because uh, the, this guy dropped the game. You know, game. You know, winning. You know, changing touchdown, and and they had drops. You know the. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs already had 17 drops going into this game, so they already had, okay, they already had a problem with drops this whole entire year. That number went from 17 to like 25, 26 drops in this game, at the end of this game, okay? And, you know, Sean Desai pisses me off sometimes, but whatever he's doing, it's working. And I get it. Because there's a lot of other football games that I watch where they have like man-to-man -man coverage, single high safety, and either the safety's not good enough to get help and not good with his eyes, or these uh, these corners get burnt so crazy off the line where they're giving up big plays nonstop. And this is a team right here that doesn't give up a big play a lot this season. It hasn't really happened too much. And big play as in like a 60, 50-yard touchdown going downfield overhead. You know, we've gotten some PI calls because of it and stuff like that. And it's, it's kind of crazy because I feel like I'd rather have a P.I. call than have someone get 50, 60 yards. Like, I, I get it, but obviously that's added on to the penalty if, if it's an incomplete pass or something like that. So if you're able to break a pass, a pat, if you're able to have a pass breakup and get a P.I. call, you're better to have the P.I. call than to have the catch and the P.I. call. So, you know, pisses us off in a lot of ways. Um, but I totally get it. I mean, the defensive line has been playing so damn well. A lot that came from this KC game. And, you know, Josh Sweat was getting held a lot in that game. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, Jalen Carter was so disruptive. There's a lot of tape. The stats don't really show out too much with Jalen Carter, but he was very disruptive in this damn game against KC. Making Patrick Mahomes move out of the pocket or whatnot, getting pressure on him just from Jalen Carter just giving a little bit of pressure like that and against an all-pro guard, giving him a lot of trouble, may not be getting five, six sacks in this game, but damn, he's helping other players on this defensive line, okay? Jordan Davis... Did some good things, but I don't think he, he was a, totally a big factor because I felt like the first three quarters, I felt like KC just had the momentum in the trenches, especially their offensive line. They were not afraid to run on us. Pacheco, El Air, both of them um, using some of these receivers like Nicole Hardman, some of these other guys, they, they like to use their fast track star receivers in the backfield as well as using actual running backs. So they have a diverse group of guys they can use for different things. And I think Desai did a good job on defending that at times. And really, once this game hit the end of the third to the fourth quarter, it was shutdown mode. I mean, it was literal shutdown mode with this defense. And, you know, they you know almost got a few sacks on the homes. They were getting close and getting close, and they were touching him. They were trying to bring him to the ground. They were missing him. I know Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox is having a freaking excellent year. An excellent year. Okay, it's, I mean, for a one-year deal, and Fletcher is not in his prime anymore and in a rotation, Fletch is just playing at a high level. It's insane. Okay, um, you know, I think Kevin Byard is really coming into his own as a safety right now, getting his first pick, making one mistake in the back of the end zone on coverage because I still think there is a huge miscommunication issue with this football team defensively. I think the miscommunication is... Sometimes it, I, I hate blown coverage touchdowns. It pisses me off. It just gives, uh, K, especially KC, you don't want to give up a, a blown coverage touchdown so easily. But the Eagles were just able to recoup and, and not be down and so down. Like kind of keep themselves in the middle where uh, they're not being too frustrated and, and not getting too many penalties. And I got to say, Sean Desai, as much as I hate this defense and the scheme, it's working in some weird way, and he's using a lot of these players to their strengths. And I understand we're giving up throws underneath, and a lot of you know a lot of rival fans will say to you, "Oh, your defense is cooked. Your secondary sucks." But yeah, it sucks because that's the scheme. We we are supposed to give up yards, like that's the way it goes. Um, but then I see in the fourth quarter, I see some different things where they're playing some man on man. They're bringing five up front you know there was one time they blitzed everybody in the fourth quarter they, they brought the whole kitchen sink and Mahomes still got the throw off you know I mean that's how good Mahomes is I mean even that fourth and 25 they had the last play of the game literally I mean he had it in Christian Christian Watson's hands were right there I mean Patrick Mahomes is, is no joke man and I don't know a lot of teams are not going to Arrowhead 
Casey has never lost a game in November ever since Patrick Mahomes has been. They have never lost a game in the month of November. It's it's absolutely insane. The Eagles have been dominant against 500 plus teams. I mean, just insane. And Sean Desai's defense is, uh, I mean, between the depth that they have, now this defense is getting more healthy. Getting Bradley Roby back definitely helped this defense. I mean, he comes back and makes a play on Travis Kelsey with Sean Cunningham, knocking the ball free, where it gives the offense so much momentum, but it didn't. <laughs> you know, screen pass left, screen pass right, and then you do a, a third down a third down, um, you know, QB scramble. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, the defense is, like I said, I'm always going to hate this defense, the way they play it, the bend, don't break, the underneath stuff. I understand why they do it. Um, I just hate it because I feel like we are not as creative on defense like Casey was against us. I'm bringing in, you know, rushing three guys on the on the right side. So you can't you can't account for everybody rushing, you know, a corner blitz, a safety blitz. You know, Trent McDuffie almost got, you know, got the Jalen Hurts once on a sack. Got him almost like another couple times. You know, they kept taking their shots, um, you know, and, and that's, you know, I think there's like less creativity with this defense at times. Um, you know, I just feel like they need to be a little tiny bit more aggressive for these linebackers, just a little bit. I mean, Nicholas Morrow has had a, not a bad year at all. Um, and has played for Sean Desai's defense in the past and has played, you know, played with a crappy bears team last year that didn't do much of anything. He had over 116 tackles. I think he had most, I think he had the highest percent of tackles on the team last year for the bears. Um, and Zach Cunningham is just a savvy vet. And I said, if he stays healthy, I mean, look, he's not, I don't think he's the best coverage guy pursuing guys on the run at times, just depending on who he's facing. Uh, but when, he, but his physicality definitely shows and his tackling definitely shows at times. Like I said, I don't think we have the best coverage type linebackers. Hence why I feel like Nolan Smith should be more involved in this defense and should, if, if, if he's too undersized for defensive end, there's gotta be something else he could do. And that's him being a Sam linebacker. I think they have to incorporate him for the future, not just this year, but for the future, maybe they keep him where he is right now. Derek Burnett's already missed two games. One is a personal scratch and one as a personal day, whatever that, I mean, whatever, I, hopefully it's, it's not serious and his family and everything's great. You know, hopefully nothing serious. Hopefully this was just a move to say it's personal issues just because of them setting him out. Um, but like I said, um, this this was a, a great game. I mean, you know, Miami was a good good defensive game. Um, and obviously, you know, the missed tackling um, has been a problem here. Uh, missed the open field tackle. Slay missed an open field tackle. It, it's tough, man. It's not easy to make open. If you're playing, if you're leaving everything open underneath, you have to make those tackles because if you don't playing 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 back far back like that is not going to make a damn difference. If you don't make those tackles, you're giving up more than chunk plays. I feel like every time it is a second and long, third and long, the Eagles just make it way too easy. They play perimeter defense. They play the picket fence defense where they bring everybody back right on the first down marker or right in front of it. And I feel like we give them the most yards uh, possible. If it's third and 15, we give them 14 yards. You're like, I, I can't stand that. They give just too much away at times. I understand you don't want to give up the big play on that. Rush a fifth guy. Just do, just bring a little extra something. This way, if it's third and long or something like, especially over third and 15, third and 20, third and 25, something like that, then you can add at least rush a fifth guy. This way, that pass won't be over the line. This way, it'll be an underneath throw. And that's what you're kind of looking for on those long downs like that. So, like I said, there's good, there's bad with it, but no defense is playing perfect this year. No, you, I mean, seriously, I mean, to be honest, it, it, nobody's playing good this year. Nobody's playing, like, everybody, no one's playing dominantly perfect on both sides. There's not one team out there that's doing both, but the Eagles are fighters. The Eagles shut down, and this defense just, what they did a lot, probably no NFL team is doing this against Kansas City. Kansas City's got an easy schedule going forward, okay? They'll beat probably everybody else on their schedule. But hopefully with the Philadelphia Eagles, we give some blueprints out to where, you know, maybe other teams will try to beat KC in a certain way. And um, obviously the, the brotherly shove works and all that stuff, you know, which a lot of teams can't stop. But I just want to talk about the defense quick because I thought, you know, we'll get into the offense another day, um, you know, but I kind of want to talk about the defense because they just played amazing. Both sides played great. But the defense, the shutdown KC with no points, just fantastic. Um, where is Rashad Penny? That's the question. <laughs> I mean, um, 
Rashad Penny was inactive for this KC game. And now I'm like, dude, now I know 100% that they don't think he's good enough. It's the truth. They're not saving him. They're not. This, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get with, with the Rashad Penny. I've never seen him hold on to a fourth running back like this so close to the belt. You know, Rashad Penny is waiting. And, you know, he had a couple snaps for the Cowboys. After when Jalen Hurts kind of hurt his knee a little bit, and then he got into the second half, they had Rashad Penny go out for a couple snaps. He had like a six- to eight-yard run and then like a, two, a one, two-yard run, okay? I think the Eagles don't think that Rashad Penny is good enough. But if he's not that good, why is he even on the active roster? Like, what's the – or my only on the active roster since the, he's inactive and active certain weeks just depends. But I think he's going to be more inactive now because you're going to get Justin Evans back. You have Cam Jurgens back. You're going to have Quez Watkins back. You're going to have a lot of guys back, okay? And Rashad Penny is just a waste at this point. Just If you want to protect him every week and sure he doesn't get picked up by another team, that's perfectly fine. But I think – Rashad Penny is more reserved. I think if somebody gets hurt or something like that, you know, I think Rashad Penny will be active but won't play. So if, you know, you know, knock on wood for injuries or anything like that, you don't want to see um, guys injured or anything. But I just don't think that the Eagles front office or the coaching staff thinks that Rashad Penny is good enough for this running back core. That's what I'm taking out of it. If it, we had a bye week and we're going to the second half of this season, week 11, going on week 12 now, and he's still inactive, he's still not in the rotation. I mean, trust me, I absolutely love more Swift, more Boston Scott, less Kenneth Gainwell. And they really did that. They did that against KC. You know, I would have wanted a little, little bit more Swift, but I feel I felt like that was going in a nice trending direction when it came to the running back core. And that is perfectly fine with me. So he's just not good enough. The coaching staff does not think highly of him. And there's going to be a time when we're probably going to need him. Who knows? We might not. But, hey, it is what it is. And lastly, this isn't anything crazy. But, you know, Chris Sims has said some good things for once about the Philadelphia Eagles. Was actually talking about the brotherly shove. Now, I, don't, I still don't think he has respect for Jalen Hurts regardless. I don't know. I don't know what he said about. KC or anything I didn't see any news about him talking about Jalen Hurts against KC and how he did and I don't think this team is getting respect out of that win I think there will be some respect but got to give the Eagles a lot of respect for this game um, but this is what he said about the brotherly shove he says I've changed my thoughts on the brotherly shove I've seen enough to know enough to know you can stop it you can make it illegal just because one team's awesome at it at the rest of the NFL isn't. There was a time I was against it, but it would be cheap if they took it out because it would only be because the Eagles are too good at it. Screw that. This is the NFL. Big boy football. Either you do it or draft or draft people to stop it, but you can't change a rule because one team's keep kicking the shit out of everyone doing it when the rest of the league has shown they can stop other teams that that do it so um yeah i mean this was a fire this was a fire 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 little interview um podcast from chris sims i mean we don't hate him for a week so that's great because he knows the eagle fans are never on his side when he talks negative about this team and it is true um because this this move is always in their back pocket do you guys notice during the game it's it's insane dude They've only screwed up the they've only screwed up this play three, four times. Probably. 53 of 57. I mean, it's just insane. I'm sort of God. During the game, I don't know what the what the legal number is now of of the the brotherly shove. During the game, it was like when they were completed the first time against KC. I think it was like 53 of 55, 52 of 55, 53 of 57. I mean, it's cool. they've done it almost over 50 times this year and only messed up a few times. Now, the, a few times, probably the Washington one where they stay, oh, we stopped, we stopped it. They didn't stop nothing. Jalen Hurts fumbled it. And then there was another time, I think. Yeah, it was again. I think it was against not the Cowboys. I think it was. I think it was the Jets. I'm not really sure. They did it from the end zone to get more yards. It wasn't for a first down. It was just to get some yards at, to get them out of the end zone for like three, four yards. Um, so that counts as not actually getting it. <laughs> so I don't know what the other two times or the other three or two times were, but um, oh yeah, probably one where they did it twice. So like, 
it's amazing how good they are at it. It really is because I watch it every week and no teams can do it. I mean, no teams can do it. It's kind of nuts. But let me get this video over with because it's been over like 24 minutes. I don't want to waste any of your, of your time. But, guys, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you guys have it. Um, really do appreciate it. And, you know, I'll be watching more highlights and more stuff. We'll have more to talk about tomorrow, no doubt. Um, and I apologize for my late upload of the KC game because I, I just lost track of time. I had the video done and I was just so tired the other day. I wasn't, I was so busy the next day. It was a late upload. So I do apologize for that. You guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Remember, shakes what up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.